So today we're going to take a look at uh, oops, graphing the function y equals sine x. But before we get into this function itself, let's step back a little bit and bring something in from last year. How about um, thinking about y equals x squared and its graph. So <clears throat> I'm hoping some of you, if not all of you, know exactly what that looks like or has or have a strong idea. Uh, you may or may not recall. I hope many of you do. But if you didn't, what could you possibly do to make sense of it? I would hope that you would say, well, if I really don't know what anything looks like, for whatever reason, have a little block, I can graph the function. Some teachers call it a t-chart. I don't know. It's just a table of numbers. And let's put some values in for x and figure out what y would equal x squared, what x squared turns out to be, which is y, and then plot those points. So we should, if you go back to algebra 1, know that we should try at least three numbers. I always pick 0 because it's an easiest one, usually the easiest value to deal with. Doesn't work if you have variables in the denominator, but that's not going to be the scope right now. And then uh, you want to play with some negative numbers and some positive numbers because they may uh, interact differently within the function. So let's just start out with these numbers. And I should get 1, 0, and 1. So if you recall, when we plot these points, uh, 0, 0 is here. Negative 1, 1 is here-ish. And 1, 1 is about here. So does that give us enough information? I'm not sure. What if our function looked like that? Which you should know it is not, but this doesn't necessarily give us enough information. So let's take a look at what would happen at the values if we made them a little, if we expanded the, the numbers that we're going to look at to include negative 2 and 2, we should get 4 and 4. So then if I'm going out to 2, I go all the way up to 4. And we can go all the way up to 4. So we should start thinking about our function not looking very linear. And in fact, it's not. It's a parabola because this is a quadratic. And so that's what it look, looks like. So now let's bring in some uh, another idea that we need to be familiar with from previous years as well. If I deal with um, this guy, that is what we refer to as a parent function. And from there, you should have messed around, figured out some stuff with that. Should have translated it. So if I end up having a function like y equals x squared plus 5, what does that do to the parent function? You should be thinking, well, it is a shift or a translation in the positive y direction or a shift up five units to here. And so what used to be parent function wise looking like this is now shifted up five units till it's there. So originally it looked like this. Oops. Originally it looked like that. That guy is down here. But then when I start thinking about this one, now it's up here. OK? So we're going to take that idea and expand. Let's go back to single page. So now we're talking about this function. Oops. Hopefully I don't do that too often. We're talking about this function now which in fact is another parent function. It is the parent function because there aren't any variables other than the minimum, or the values are the minimums. Here is your expanded generic, a generic version of this function. Each of these values, each of these values, 
each of these variables. When I say variables, I mean, I should say constants. Each of these numbers will do something different. Hopefully some of you will recognize what, what this does, what this does, what this does, and what that does to the values, or to the function, all right? But today we're just gonna focus on that guy, all right? So if you're not sure what that looks like, we can start out with the T chart. And that would be like this. And then we want to graph the Y value, which in fact is the sine of X. Now X in this case is theta or an angle measure. And because our table is going to be large, we're actually going to shift and use a horizontal table. All right. So I put in some angle measures here. So what is the sign, the value for sine x when x is negative 360 degrees? If you don't recall, let's figure that out by looking at, you, of course you could grab your calculator, but that's not really where we want to go for these angle measures, right? It's these, some, these are some of our pretty angles to be specific. They are the quadrantal angles. And so there's a not too bad unit circle. 300, negative 360 degrees would be this guy. I'm going to go around this way. That's 360 degrees, right? So I'm really talking about an initial side here, a terminal side also here. And so I'm talking about this point where the terminal side intersects the unit circle, and the coordinates of that point are 1, 0. So the sign is the y value. And I will tell you, we mentioned this in class, I think of the sign of an angle measure as, equaling, as equal to the height of my function. It's the height. Height, height, height. You'll see even more so why that is the case when we graph the function itself on a different coordinate system. In this coordinate system, we have an x and a y axis. So that's the height. What is the height at 0 degrees, or excuse me, negative 360 degrees? The height is 0. 270 degrees, negative 270 degrees, that means going around here and stopping here. So let's go ahead and see if I can grab all that stuff and remove it. All right, we can leave that there. I right, can get rid of that and get rid of this nonsense. Go back to, let's use a different color this time. Negative 270 is 90, 180, 270. So now, where is that intersection? That's the point. 0, 1. By the way, I'm pausing, so you can think about it. So then what is the height of that point, or what is the y value of that point? All the same question, having to do with sine x, and it would be 1. Now, negative 180. I think after this one I won't erase it and I won't draw the loops. Negative 180 is this guy, so what is this point? The coordinates for this point are Correct, one, negative one, zero. So what's the height? Zero, negative 90. What are the coordinates for that point? Zero comma negative one. So the height of negative 90 is negative one. Back to here, zero, 90. We're back to zero comma one. So this is one. 180, we're back over to here. And 270, we're back down here. And 360, we're back over here, zero. Okay, <clears throat> so now let's take a look at plotting those points. And remember, you're supposed to be taking notes. So uh, there'll be some note uploading to bounce here or whatever we're doing this year. Or if we're not doing it, then disregard this note if this is a later year. This happens to be 2015 fall. So we're going to plot these points. So what do you think is our x-axis going to be and what do you think our y-axis is going to be? So let's go there. It should be this. Uh, let's split screen that so we can see our numbers. Okay, so this might be a little tight because of uh, it's just easier to see when it's wider, but that's okay. We'll figure it out. Let's go black. Do, 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 do. <clears throat> let's get this up there and that down there. Of course, I know what this looks like. You will hopefully know what this looks like. 
in short order and hopefully you'll remember because you're going to need to, it's going to help you to remember what this looks like. So we're going to plot the point zero for X. So excuse me, zero for X. I'm sorry, negative 360 for X, but these are angle measures. So you can either put theta or you can put X or theta if we're using theta because we can write this just as well like that. Okay. And then um, that's going to bother people. Anyway, negative 360 is back this way, so negative 360 degrees. Negative 90, and this is going to be 0, both in the x and y. This is going to be 1, and that's going to be negative 1. And this is going to be 90, this is going to be 180, 270, and 360. So negative 360 is going to be 0. Let's change colors. It's going to be there. And negative 270 is going to be at 1, so it's somewhere around there-ish. And negative 180 is going to be back down to 0. And negative 90 is going to be negative 1, so it's down here. And 0 is going to be at 0. And of course, 90 is going to be at 1. And 180 is going to be at 0. 270 is going to be at negative 1 and 360 is going to be at 0. Okay? So we plotted 1, 2, 3, 4, no, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9 points. And that should be actually way too many, but I'm just doing it for the first time so you can see what's happening here. So let's now talk about what's going on here. And then hopefully we'll be done soon. So here's the rub. If you were to graph just those points, you might be thinking the following. My function looks like this. Like jagged teeth, like jaws. Da -da 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 -da. Why did you do that? That's weird. Let's get rid of that. Delete. OK. But it's not jaws. It's not jaws at all. It's not a tumor. It's not a tumor at all. So how do we know what's happening in between for instance, 360 and two set, negative 270. So let's not worry about that. Let's actually investigate what's happening in between, in between here. Not going to pen. In between here, 0 and 90. So let's take a look, closer look at that. Because this is not is what this is not what's happening here. Those. What's happening really is this. It's curving, becoming flatter up here. Oops, that's poorly done. It's more like this, and it continues on forever. Continues on forever. Okay, I'm going to ask you a question regarding these deals and this information here as well, but we'll talk about that in a second.